We're live! Hi! Hi. 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 Oh, I have a couple of viewers already, which makes me happy. Yay. Cool. I recognize all of them. <laughs> Good. Um, we are, this is the Biblio Book Club live show for the August, no, July through September. Yeah. <laughs> July is that what it is? Yep. Uh, book of the month or whatever, book of the quarter, <laughs> which was Harry Potter and the Cursed Child by J.K. Rowling. Sorry if you guys can hear an echo because I we don't know why we hear it. <laughs> We've tried fixing it. I'm just really hoping it goes away. Normally it's me, but I try <laughs> both headphones. Normally headphones, period, puts it away. Mm -hmm. I still don't hear it. <laughs> I don't hear anything. Maybe it's Sierra. <laughs> So today we're discussing Harry yeah, Potter was. and the Cursed Child. Oh my god, it was here. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, it's not me. <laughs> All right, now that we have that fixed, we're discussing Harry Potter and the Cursed Child by John Tiffany and Jack Thorne. Not that sounds weird, Alex. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> um... What are we doing for questions? Because we want you guys to submit questions. Yeah, please, please ask us questions. Because I feel like all of us read this like the day it came out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we like, all have to not very fresh. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you can tweet us at the Bibliothon. I would say you can tweet us individually. And um, I'm looking at the live chat on YouTube. So if you want to ask questions there, yeah, you can ask questions Me there. Mm-hmm. Uh, do we want to start with, like, general thoughts and, like, non-spoilery stuff in case anyone who's tuned in hasn't watched it? Yeah, that sure. works. All right, Cassie, what's the order since you set it up? Um, Emma, Sierra, then me. Okay. Um, so what did I give it? I think I gave it 3.5 stars because I really, really enjoyed certain parts of it, but I could not wrap my head around quite a bit of it. But for the most part, it was, like, an enjoyable read. I'm glad I read it. I'm glad it exists. Um, but I'm excited to talk about, like, all the good and the bad with you guys. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think I gave it a five out of five stars. I don't know. I don't have my good reads up. But I didn't read any, like, <clears throat> synopsises for it or anything. So I just went into it blind. And I just read it to enjoy it instead of, like, reading it to criticize. And I really loved it. <laughs> um I read the synopsis beforehand and I was really hoping that the synopsis would be fake and it wasn't. So um I I actually ended up giving it a 4 out of 5 stars because um I don't know like I really liked it just it was really nostalgic for sure. I really liked that. Um but like I was also really annoyed with all the characters, and I don't know. I have a lot of feelings. Mm -hmm. So I also forgot to say I did know the entire plot before reading. Like I knew basically every scene and every page because I'm I spoil myself a lot. But I truly don't think it really impacted my reading that much because, like, um, I read a lot that were like had like actual things of dialogue from people who had like seen the play. So it wasn't like I was just reading like one person's interpretation, like, everything was really unbiased and, like, virtually reading the play. So I don't think it, like, impacted me all that much. I totally could have, but um, yeah. I'm kind of glad I read it before because I was prepared rather than going in super excited and being, like, what yeah. is this? I was just going to say that. I wasn't super excited, though. Mm -hmm. I, like, knew that, like, everyone was complaining about the synopsis and how horrible it was supposed to be. So I went in thinking that it was going to be completely awful. <laughs> oh, and then you were pleasantly surprised. Yeah. Yeah. So I yeah, enjoyed it, and I think it's worth reading if you're a Harry Potter fan. Yeah, somebody like, just asked in the, the comments, I haven't yeah. read it yet, is it worth it? I think it's worth reading. I, I think, think if you love if Harry you, Potter, it's worth it. Yeah, if you have already read all seven of the Harry Potter books, and you are, like, deep, deep in love with this series, I think that it's definitely worth it because it's just continuing on with the same story that you're mm -hmm. already obsessed with. But yeah. if you, like... If you were one of those people, which I don't know that they exist, but who read Harry Potter and you're just like, eh, then mm -hmm. I would not say to continue. <laughs> Wait, you mean those people exist? I don't there think are people so. that I have read Harry Potter and just like, eh. <laughs> No, that doesn't. That mm -hmm. can't be real. Yeah, I think it still has value to it. I mean, you know, we wouldn't really know 
Albus or Scorpius without it. And, mm-hmm. you know, while, you know, one of them isn't all that perfect, the other one is obviously very perfect. But <laughs> I think that um, it's definitely, like, it, it's given closure on some things, and it definitely did, um, you know, provide an asset to the story of Harry Potter in certain ways. Yeah. I think a lot of the complaints, too, were that it's a play, which we all knew going into. Like, <laughs> no, we all had to everyone was like, oh, I'm so annoyed it's a play. And I'm like, we knew that from when we first heard about it. So, yeah, I feel like it was also lame that it was a play, but also yeah. we all knew it was a play, and we shouldn't have been surprised when we opened the first page. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm, I also, like, I've read a lot of plays in my life, and I personally don't like reading that style of writing because it tends to not give you a whole lot of, you know, in-depth description and stuff. So, like, I already knew that I was likely going to have an issue with just reading it like that. But because I've read so many plays, it wasn't, like, hard to read or it wasn't as frustrating because I knew what I was getting myself into. Whereas I feel like somebody who's never read a play in their life before picks up this book, which they are... A re- an avid reader probably considering the fact that they've probably read all seven books of the Harry Potter series <laughs> yeah, uh, right. picks up this book and they're like what the fuck am I reading because this has nothing in it like there's no <laughs> description or anything so I can easily see how somebody would like pick this book up and be like why does that why does that side on like this <laughs> it also didn't bother me since like I was in film school and like screenwriting is a thing you have to do so it wasn't like super bizarre for me to read because I used to have to write all kinds of shit like that Mm -hmm. (laughs) right um do we want to jump into some questions there's a couple in um both like the the bibliothon twitter and the um the chat the chat who disliked us already geez me (laughs) so mean we're (laughs) (laughs) just kidding (laughs) Uh, let's do the chat first because i can't see the Mm -hmm. chat Okay, so it says, um, the one I see that I'm excited to talk about is, what do you think about there being no Teddy Lupin in the play? (sighs) I'm so (laughs) pissed. (laughs) Me too. I mean, this could go for many characters. Hagrid. I know. Because even, like, they're mentioned, and we have a scene with Hagrid, but Hagrid's not presently in the play, and they mention... Neville, but Neville's not seen. Luna's not in it. They're missing so many characters, and it's like it felt. I felt more careless than anything to me. Like they just didn't think they were important enough to include. I yeah, I agree. I, I am especially mad about Teddy because, like, mm-hmm. like Hagrid and okay. So realistically, we don't spend that much time at Hogwarts, and yeah. this is a stage play. Like stage plays cannot have a full cast like you can get in a movie or a book yeah. where you have all this exposition and these like lots of time frame because an, a play has to be done in like two hours or whatever. And this play is really long, like two. Yeah. So they've you all five ready. hours to read. <laughs> yeah, the the play is I think a five hour play. Like that's a long play that's a long movie like you can't expect all these characters to be shown so like i was okay with getting just a neville i think we hear neville's name he's More. mentioned but yeah. i don't even think hagrid gets mentioned like that upset me that he's mm-hmm. not even there he's not even named and like lupin is a part of this family mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. how and also, was he not in it i don't know also the, it starts at the epilogue of deathly hallows which teddy is there First of all, I don't understand why Teddy's there because he's not, he's an adult and he's at Hogwarts and I don't understand why he's snogging victory on King's Cross, but that's a problem I have with J.K. <laughs> Rowling, not this book. But either way, like, he's not there. Hugo isn't even in this book either. Why, like, why is Ron and Hermione's other son, who's also at Hogwarts, like, not there? He was also there at King's Cross and it's just like, you can have them there for just one scene. <laughs> <laughs> like one scene that, like, that they're canonically there. Yeah, it was so frustrating. I was so yeah, and we. I mean, we do have that one scene with uh, Hagrid at the end, but it it felt like such a cop out to me because like he wasn't presently in the book. Oh, like that yeah. was in the past, something that's already happened. Like I would have loved to see, like however old Hagrid is at this point, that's like true. coddling and like 
Scorpius. And yeah, um, that makes me even more mad because I actually forgot that he's, they show that scene. They like, Mm -hmm. they replay the original scene, right? Like where he finds Harry. Mm -hmm. And it makes me even more mad that that happens because that means that they casted a Hagrid. He's existing like (laughs) a cast and you didn't put him in the fucking play. Like, excuse me? Yeah. Yeah. There's just, um, there's so many reasons why I could be like, this would have been so much better served in a different format. You know, like if they just had the, the time to take care of like just a couple other characters. Um, <clears throat> there's another really really good one um if you could choose a new plot for albus and scorpius what would it be well i would make their ship canon for sure <laughs> yes <laughs> they're gay Wait, where okay. is that? it's on twitter uh, it's on the twitter oh i'm all looking through the chat <laughs> <laughs> like i don't see that one mm-hmm. yeah it's yeah, I would make their ship canon, first and foremost. Yeah, that would it would be a love story. <laughs> I agree. Although, like, I feel like um, Scorpius was, like, really into Rose. It yes. felt so fake to me personally. Oh, did it? Like, I don't – I just, like – it's not even because, like, I originally wanted Albus and Scorpius to – like be gay for each other because that came like throughout the book but just in the beginning when his like jaw is just like drooling over rose i'm like this feels so forced (laughs) oh i meant like later in the book i wasn't even thinking about that part Mm -hmm. i feel like i just all my thoughts on this book are really like minuscule because i read it so fast it's like none none of it processed Um, if I had a new plot for them, I would have just liked to see something more in the format of the Harry Potter books. Like, I wanted to see, like, their first few years at Hogwarts, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, when I heard that we were getting a story about, like, Harry and Ginny and Ron and Hermione's parents, and, um, you know, we were getting it about the kids. Like, I wanted to see the kids go to Hogwarts and them encounter probably not, like, something like Lord Voldemort again, but I just would have liked to see, like, them go through the motions of, like, actually getting sorted and going Mm -hmm. to classes and like dealing with whatever issue it was because that was like five to ten pages in the beginning and that's all we got the first four years was like ten pages like it went that fast it was like and now it's year three and now they're going (laughs) (laughs) the worst transitions on like you're like wait what chapter are we in Do you guys have any ideas for um, plots? I I would have liked to see. Okay, well, hmm, I would have liked to see something that didn't involve Voldemort. Like, yeah, like make it. Mm-hmm. Come on, like we defeated him. Stop bringing him back. And we also, him. <laughs> yeah, like the whole the whole way that the time it time did not make any sense did it make sense oh i don't know if we're ready to get into this in (laughs) this world like (laughs) it wasn't the same way that that the original way that the time turner worked worked it didn't it wasn't the same it was opposite it was a different type of time travel i didn't get it i got so confused it took me about 15 minutes of that review just to go over the time turners just because (laughs) i just i i I tried so hard to make sense of it but it's the total opposite length of timeline and the thing that one of the things that didn't upset me that much at first but upsets me now is that jk rowling realized that she left a lot of plot holes in prisoner of asking with the time traveling thing and that's why she destroyed them in uh the fifth one and then um after she like um after the seventh harry potter book she made it so that they wouldn't have them anymore or whatever it was like they were like all gone like nobody could use them so she basically destroyed time travel because she knew she messed up and i'm like that's what an author should do in a series Mm -hmm. like they should go back and be able to fix their problems and she apparently approved something that went against all of that like she made a, a statement a couple years ago talking about how she knew she messed up with time travel and then, like, all of a sudden, we have this book that's just exactly, like, what she tried to destroy. You know what I mean? So I'm like, what yeah. happened there? Like, why would you approve this if you were like, wait, this is this was wrong when I did it the first time, and it's still totally different? Or maybe the reason this would be weird. Maybe the reason that she thought she messed up in Prisoner of Azkaban is because of the way that time travel worked. 
Whereas like this mm -hmm. would make more sense because if you go back, then you, you will change something, mm -hmm. which like, I mean, most time travel movies have that aspect. Like you can't fuck with time because right. you could possibly create some mm -hmm. worse situation than what you're trying to fix in the first place. Everyone read Passenger. That's really good time <laughs> travel. Yeah. <laughs> and watch 112263. It's great. Hulu mm -hmm. original. Okay. And with um with time travel like in a, in a scientific research respect, both are actual like theories of time travel. There is like the fixed one that they're trying to prove and they are trying to to prove like the the grandfather paradox back to the future thing. So it makes sense that like any story could have both of them and it, it, they could have scientific research backing it, but I just can't comprehend this switch from one to another. Like yeah. had this had this book like incorporated time travel to respect and kept the first one, I've been totally fine. I would have had no issues. But yeah. like now, time turners, you can apparently pick the day and time and year yeah. that you want to go back to. Like how convenient! <laughs> and like that's one of those things where like when dealing with a fantasy story, you mm -hmm. get to make the rules, right? But mm -hmm. the rules have to exist. Yes. Or else your story falls apart and no one will be able to understand it. Mm -hmm. So exactly. <laughs> I feel like this book did that. Oops. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the time travel was a mess. I just want a statement on it from someone who went into it. Like, why did you do this? Like, yeah. just someone explain it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, can we ask the question from Proud Book Lion on Twitter? Mm -hmm. um, opinions on the crazy trolley lady. Oh, my God. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> there were so many things you could have done like so <laughs> many <laughs> like why were we in like x-men or something i don't know i didn't get it i didn't, I didn't get, get it, it either although all i could think of was my first bibliothon and that girl that <laughs> won the cosplay wait was that oh, the emma from, oh, yeah. one? emma from teller of tales i think that was the second one but yeah i was like actually i was like, so picturing her. her i was picturing <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was definitely picturing movie trolley lady. Oh yeah, no. I yeah. Well. Aw. <laughs> Emma, um, you were in not this Emma. I'm um, from Teller. I'm a Taylor Taylor. Of Taylor. <laughs> yeah. Um, like there were just you're in a magical world. There are an infinite number of barriers you could make for them to not jump off the train. We go with the crazy trolley lady that stopped Fred and George, that stopped Sirius Black, but can stop two extremely unexperienced wizards. Like, are you no. okay? I call <laughs> fucking bullshit. That's not real. There's no chance that this trolley lady could have stopped. Like, we know how many people. Oh, I'm so upset. Yeah. <laughs> like, how did she stop fucking Malfoy? I'm sure Malfoy would have tried to get mm -hmm. off the train in the sixth year and like Voldemort existed on this train at some point in the past as Tom Riddle like but she can, can't stop the two children the two literally idiotic children who are like <laughs> I know I they were like it. such I don't know I don't, never mind. <laughs> well, I think one of my other problems with this book is that the the way that we experienced Hermione and Ron and Harry and Ginny and all these characters that we got throughout these these the seven books like they not only like grow up throughout what we watch but like they are significantly different from year one to year seven yeah and so this book is taking place in year four so think about like what our characters from the original Harry Potter series went through in that year like so much stuff and like like Ron gets mad at Harry in that year and Hermione is dealing with the them not speaking and like so they're like being a little bit immature but by the end of it literally by like halfway through the year they get over it and they're friends again and all this stuff like they're very mature children mm -hmm. and then we have Albus and Malfoy who are the same age and they feel like like my little brother who's eight years old like that's how yeah. they feel to me and I'm just like what I don't get it like, was that because they grew up in a time frame where they never had to worry the same way that these kids had to worry? Like, Harry like had a Hermione tough childhood. Grew, did she? No, what not really. She was going to say, like, Hermione. I mean, Hermione is a pretty privileged individual. Yeah, I was going to say, she didn't really have to like they did, and she was way mature. Yeah. 
But her parents were also dentists, so <laughs> yeah. But like also from year from her age of eleven, she has dealt with Voldemort already. Mm-hmm. Like so, she's definitely had like life, like deathly experiences by mm-hmm. year four. So maybe that's why we get these like really mature characters in the mm-hmm. Harry Potter series. Mm-hmm. Whereas in these in this book, our characters are so childish. Like I don't know. I mean, I know they're kids, but. Mm-hmm. They're 14, not 11. Like, right. by the time we're really getting this story, I don't know. It was really annoying yeah. to me. And I mean, uh, Scorpius is very intelligent and he's clever, but um, especially Albus. Like, Albus is immature and he acts like a child when he's a teenager. And yeah. I actually didn't even pick up on this while reading, but now that you're like talking about it, I totally know what you're saying. Like, they don't act like normal yeah. children mm-hmm. in the, the wizarding world. And I mean, honestly, not even like, like, even the side characters of Harry Potter were more, like, uh, yes. mature than these two. Oh, yeah. And we have, like, you know, little bits of pages of people like Seamus and Dean Thomas. But right. a whole book about Albus yeah. and Scorpius and they feel like they're 10. <laughs> yeah, that's why, like, I mean, I didn't even realize. I, like, while reading this book, forgot at some point that we had skipped over four years. And then somebody was complaining about how fast like the time passes in the beginning of the book. And I was like, oh, I didn't realize this wasn't a year one book because they feel like 11 year olds. That's right. how old they seem to me. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's just very frustrating. Also like the timing of how did they get, uh, what's the potion called? The poly- Polyjuice potion. Polyjuice potion. What? Mm-hmm. <laughs> what? I know. What? what? <laughs> uh, okay. We have another Can character. we talk about... The fact that the entire book was based around saving Cedric Diggory? <gasps> like, why what and why? why? All these things. <laughs> yeah, so like, many random characters get such big... Like, why do we need that whole scene with the trolley lady? Like, why do we need this whole plot with Cedric? Like, the most random characters in Harry Potter <laughs> are the ones getting this plot. Like, yeah. <laughs> I was excited because of um, Edward Cullen. <laughs> Robert <laughs> like, Imagine also, Robert Pattinson playing Cedric Yeah, Diggory. I know, because that's all I can think of when I think of Cedric Diggory. So, oh like, I was thinking of that, and, like, I was all excited, and then we get to that part in the end where fucking Cedric <laughs> kills fucking Neville, and I was so pissed. And I was like, are you fucking kidding me? I'm really upset still. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think that I was also, my... Go ahead. Oh, no, 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 because no, I was going to go a little off topic. What were you gonna oh, say? I was just going to say, like, this, this is more reason why I'm frustrated with this book because I feel like we didn't actually get a sequel. Like, we just re-delved into the same plot of the mm-hmm. seven books that we've already read because our main villain is Voldemort and our main, like... The whole plot is surrounded by book four, which just like book four is my least favorite book also. So why are we talking (laughs) about it still? (laughs) So annoying. No, I agree. I definitely think it would have been like so beneficial for them to just totally do something different Mm -hmm. um, rather than like just like go back on what we already have. I just feel like it was, it felt very like put together and like, you know what I mean? It just felt like they were like, okay, what what do they want to see more of? And they still yeah. disregarded a lot of what we wanted to see more of, but they were like, you know, like, let's just go with what we know and yeah. not try and do anything different. And I mean, the story itself, like, the, the thought of the play being based off of Harry and his kids and, like, them as parents, it wasn't even Joan's idea. Like, that was um, either John or Jack's idea. Like, she didn't even come up with the idea for the play. So I just feel like... It, it's very, very obvious that, like, this wasn't J.K. Rowling's story and this wasn't her Harry Potter. Mm-hmm. Whereas, like, when we, we are comparing now, we're getting this, like, five movie series in the Harry Potter oh, world. Know five. What the hell? The I, first one isn't even out yet. Okay. How do I know if I, I like mean, it? Obviously, we have, we have, like, it's a little bit of a stressful situation because you're just like, no, please don't destroy it. But, like, literally, there's nothing to destroy. This bo- This true. whole series is something that they get to create. 100%. Mm-hmm. J.K. Rowling is part of the writing process. Mm-hmm. Like, isn't she writing the screenplays? Like, yeah. Whereas, at least the first one. I didn't even yeah. know it was supposed to be three movies. I thought it was just one. I just <laughs> five. found out it was five. But, like, yeah. I guess my point is that, like, 
normally in a movie adaptation, you get really stressed out because you're just like, yeah. please don't fuck with my characters. But these aren't mm-hmm. our characters. Mm-hmm. This is just like right. a full expansion of getting to see a different timeline and a different set of characters in the same world that already exists. So mm-hmm. as long as nobody decides that time turners suddenly work differently than they <laughs> used to, uh, I think it'll be okay. <laughs> the movie too this is going to be true. all about time turners. Like, this please don't. True. Can they please mm-hmm. not time turn to visit Harry Potter? Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh my God. I like this one question on Twitter. Um, from Skylar, if you could kill off one character from Cursed Child and replace him with another character that should have been there, who would it be? Wait, can you say that again? I mean, like, <laughs> if, if you were to, like, take out one character that you didn't want in the book and replace them with somebody, like, who you thought... Oh, 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 got it. Sorry. It didn't process in my brain. Um, okay. I'm going to take out Cedric because, first of all, he's dead and he, he doesn't have a place here. Um, and it would totally change the plot. So I'm going to take out Cedric and we're going to put in Hagrid because I wanted more Hagrid. <laughs> Do you have I one? I would take out Voldemort and um, replace him with anyone else. <laughs> <laughs> Any other villain. Any mm-hmm. other villain. Create a new one, please. <laughs> yeah, I would take out his the the love child because what Delphi. The fuck, Delphi. I know happening? what the hell. Like, is we that? talk about that. Now? Yes, we have to talk about that next. But I would take her Delphine out or Delphi out, and I would put in just like literally anything else. If you wanted to keep the same exact storyline, then make a different like a Death Eater that was the Death Eater in the past that didn't die. Mm-hmm. Bring him back. He escaped from Azkaban, or she escaped from Azkaban, or like it turns out that Malfoy uh, Draco is still a Death Eater, or like his oh my God, no. his wife or something. Like, you know <laughs> oh what my I mean? God, no. Like, don't touch, don't touch Draco. <laughs> like, like Scorpio and Draco end up having to do a father son duel. Oh my God, I don't want to read it. <laughs> it would be so intense. It would be so emotional. Yeah, that's my choice. That's what I would I was do. speaking of one of my fa- – I know we're talking about negatives. One of my favorite things in the book was that duel between Harry and um, – Malfoy. Harry and yes. Malfoy in the kitchen. Yes. <laughs> like, Draco, we're the same age. Well, I were it better. <laughs> I know. I laughed the hardest. That was, like, definitely the most entertaining scene. Draco yes. was everything. <laughs> I agree. Okay. Do we want to talk about – uh, what did we just mention? Delphine, Delphine in and the, the Bellatrix and Voldemort plot twist, which Ashley just asked. No. Oh. It's so gross to me. Like, it just, like, makes my stomach turn, and I don't like it. And I don't like her, and I just don't like it. <laughs> so I have a weird obsession with Bellatrix Lestrange. I know. And I'm really upset that they did this because the reason that I love Bellatrix Lestrange is how just, like, demented she is. Mm -hmm. Like, there's no such thing as a love child, first of all, that (laughs) physically cannot exist. Voldemort is 70! Like, (laughs) Voldemort... Uh, Okay, so Voldemort... He's he's an old man! (laughs) Vol- like, Voldemort is incapable of love, so there's no way that, like, Voldemort it. would just be, like, casually lusting after Bellatrix, like, hey, let's get it on, and then, oops, accidental baby. Like, that's not how this would have gone down. What would have been, what w- it would have been is a plan to make my succession mm-hmm. proceed, but mm-hmm. Voldemort had it in his head that he was going to live forever, so exactly. that would never have existed. It's thrown out the window, all that logic. Yeah. He He didn't need an heir. Like, why would he... Yeah, need anyone to follow after him. He's always done everything himself. He never wanted it. Like he doesn't want anyone to succeed after him. He wants no, to he wants to be forever. There. Yeah, and he was going to. He was confident with those seven Horcruxes, so he would never make an heir at the last moment. Especially because he, at the time of conception, he couldn't have known because it happened. At, um, he only started figuring out that they were um, hunting Horcruxes after Delphi had to have been born. Yeah. So it wasn't even like, ah, last minute, let me create an heir. (laughs) And he never would have chosen to make an heir. Like, Voldemort would have been far too 
involved with himself to believe that he right. would need an heir. He would have made a, oh, another Horcrux so over making Harry. another heir. All he could focus on was Harry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It just doesn't make any sense that that would have been the reason. And there's no such thing as, like, just... there. Like, I physically cannot believe that Voldemort would be like, man, I have a heart on right now. I really need some sexy time. So oh my God. he died a virgin. I'm confident <laughs> sure. he died like, a virgin. Not, was not that, like, that is not something that feels like it is a part of who Voldemort could be. Like, there mm-hmm. are plenty of villains that that is something that mm-hmm. can easily, like, be put on. But, like, Voldemort having that aspect of, like, naturalness because that's a really natural thing but like mm-hmm. Voldemort was so far gone and so inhuman at I this feel point like, like it just doesn't make any sense he wouldn't even it wouldn't even come to the point of having sex with Bellatrix even if it was planned he would like find a way to like create a baby inside mm-hmm. of her with yeah him. yes I also he literally was born out of a cauldron like, yeah. like you know what I mean <laughs> He, he would have used like that he's born in a cauldron. He could totally yeah. create a baby. Let's make another me in a cauldron. <laughs> yeah. So like Bellatrix. The, yeah. The only thing that does make sense in creating Delphi would be that Bellatrix was, I think, creepily, lustily in love with the idea of Voldemort. Oh, so the God. only thing yeah. that makes sense is if Bellatrix raped Voldemort. <laughs> But, like, he wouldn't have let that happen. Anyway. I know, exactly. He's way too power. She would have died first. Mm-hmm. Like, what is happening? Unless, like, she magically, like, extracted his sperm and inserted it <laughs> inside of her. Okay. But then so... again, that's not Voldemort wanting an heir, so that couldn't have happened to the book either. Oh, my God. I think that could have been what it Everything was. is wrong. All, <laughs> everything is like about it is wrong. I definitely think that Bellatrix, like, spelling the baby into reality is what See, happened. I would have believed that, but in the book it says that he wanted an heir. So yeah, it's, it's like we can't even pretend like that was a problem. If they hadn't addressed it, we could have gone on for hours about all these ridiculous things. But we can't because they say it's because he wants an heir. Which I just still think he came out of a cauldron. Or she did. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, that's possible. But I'm so obsessed with Bellatrix was strange, so I'm just really upset that they like <laughs> they have like scarred me about her like no 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 okay. so upset. I'm very sorry if we're disturbing someone in the chat I know I saw that <laughs> sorry. Sorry. where is this even gone I'm so sorry, sorry. we should have rated this like R <laughs> sorry I'm a really inappropriate person in my bed sorry 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 <laughs> Mm-hmm. We will stop talking about the love child. Okay, yeah, we're done. We're done with all the gross stuff. <laughs> Can we talk about um, Voldemort Day and um, <laughs> like, the par- all like that about- parallel word- world? Yeah, all of it? Because I actually, like, I hated it and loved it. I just couldn't Voldemort. stand the fact that they called him the Scorpion King. Like, are you joking? <laughs> like, that's a name that people call it. That's like Voldemort being at like 17, like, my name's not Tom Riddle. You have to call me Lord Voldemort. You know what I mean? Like, it felt <laughs> so weird. All I can think of when you say the Scorpion King is um, The Rock <laughs> and the Scorpion King. <laughs> Ew. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I, I've never met anyone that called somebody by such a ridiculous nickname. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's just, who, Mm-mm. how could you ever get comfortable saying that? Excuse me. <laughs> Scorpion King. What about Umbridge, that <laughs> fucking bitch? Oh, I loved that she was back. Like, yeah, I think that was a good choice. That was, I yeah, mean, I hate her so much. She's so much worse than Voldemort. Also, I know, I think that's why I liked it. Yeah. Oops. Um, I also found somewhere there's, like, a cast list. Mm-hmm. Or, like, when, when Umbridge shows up, it says who else the actor plays. And she plays, like, someone really nice, like McGonagall really? or something. I can't remember. Oh, I'm gonna my try. God. Weird. Oh, oh, my like, God. McGonagall is so good people. in this, too. Yeah, we're getting really close to having to talk about how A- Harry treated his son. And yeah. I'm not ready. <laughs> um, but yeah, I thought that Umbridge was a good choice to take back. But I just, I think I just couldn't get over any of the parallel worlds. Like mm-hmm. the first one, when like um, Hermione is like terrible to everyone, and Ron, I know. And Padma. Like after after the first one went so downhill, I just like couldn't adjust to any of them. <laughs> they just were so. They were all so like flamboyantly unrealistic yes right. but i was just like it. it's just like 
there, I get that they would have changed and the characterizations of people would have changed and like all that makes sense, but it just was so over the top that I'm just like, okay. yeah. Mm-hmm. I'll ask you guys, take. what were some of your favorite things about it? Favorite things. Mm-hmm. Oh God. It was okay. so long. I know what my one of my favorite things is. Well, we already talked what, about what is yours? the scene, the the duel between Draco and yes. Harry. Definitely, one hundred percent. I think my top favorite thing. Mm-hmm. The other thing that was my favorite was the description of how they had to get the time turner out of the bookcase, and oh, yeah, having was- to figure out how the fuck are they going to do that on stage live. Yeah. Like, oh, I, yeah, I think that would be really, really great on stage. I hear the graphics, not the graphics, like, the, the effects on stage are amazing. Mm-hmm. So I think it's going to be expressed really well, but that's, like, one of my least favorite things is I'm, like, Hermione would never hide it in a bookcase. Like, I can't even <laughs> believe that was in the book. I just, like, <laughs> like, my brain can't wrap around it. <laughs> like, why, would, why would she actually leave protection around it that would actually lead to the time turner? Yeah. yeah. Like, it's too easy. It was I really so all convenient. A fake one. Like, I thought that we were going to have to get another scene of mm-hmm. them figuring out how to get the real one because they had only received a fake, but it didn't. Yeah, like, I could see Hermione doing something, making them go through every book, like, for all of eternity and never being able to find it. Mm-hmm. But, like, actually bleeding to the time turner i'm like that's not protection at all that's a map why would you do that the only, okay so two things that i would say to to be devil's advocate is one that hermione is a very logical person and she knows that there's not very many people who are logical also so mm-hmm. she would very if out of all of the things to do it makes sense to do just a simple logical puzzle because those I'm tend to be the hardest right, for the but... most amount of people the mm-hmm. other thing that I would say to play devil's advocate is she only fe- got this time turner like a week or something beforehand or like a day. It's like mm-hmm. not that long. So this could have been her uh, like temporary hiding temporary place. hiding place. Yeah. Okay. I can see why you'd say that. But uh, my my rebuttal to that is her door still open with a little <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's <laughs> what what? No. That's not how it works. <laughs> Like, even, uh, I was discussing this with somebody on my review, because they were like, I think that, like, Alohomora opens, like, all doors or something, but even, like, Snape has, like, protections on his office and stuff, like, why wouldn't the Minister of Magic have, like, more security on their office? And I mean, I know in the movies, like, um, Umbridge's office open too, but that's Umbridge, it's not, like, the Minister of Magic, like, yeah. I don't think they could get into the Minister office. of Magic. And it's not the Minister of Magic who just find out, found out she's holding one of the, yeah. one of the, an illegal yeah. item that she didn't even know existed yet. Like, what? Exactly. Mm-hmm. I also want to point out that the door in the Sorcerer's Stone did not open to Alohomora. Which oh, door? At the end. They have to get the key. Yeah, the I remember that too. Oh, yeah. See, so there was so much more they could have done. Mm-hmm. She could have made a whole group of flying keys that just was above her office at all times. Mm-hmm. And weren't they both terrible at Quidditch? They never would have got in. Mm-hmm. Wasn't that a scene in the beginning they couldn't play Quidditch? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I remember one of my favorite things was uh, the conversation or the fight that uh, Harry had with Dumbledore. That was a favorite scene of mine. I liked that one. That was, like, one of the things that I wanted from it was, like, I wanted that anger and, like, that conversation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really liked that part, too. I also really liked um, when Scorpius and Albus see Cedric in the maze and they tell him, like, that his dad loves him. Oh, oh my God. That's so hard. (laughs) That was so sad. But, like, that was... I liked that part. I also liked um, when we got to see Snape. Although I'm not a huge fan of Snape. I know everyone's obsessed with him, and I don't like him because he told me Harry fucking ever. But I really loved, like, how excited he was when he found out, like, oh, my God. Yeah. I I was really happy that he was, like, touched that. Yes. um, Right. I cried cried. him. I, like – that wasn't that was something I didn't even know I wanted. Like I never considered like how would Snake feel about this, but I'm like, oh, like this makes me really this yeah. makes me feel fulfilled. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I also am not a fan of Snape. I like. Yeah. I felt like him. it gave him a little bit of redemption, like in my eyes, because I don't like him at all, which like mm-hmm. also annoys me because I still don't like him, but like also that <laughs> scene was so cute. <laughs> yeah. It was very heartwarming. Mm-hmm. 
Um, what was the other thing I really? Oh, I had like another thing in my head. I really like that. Um, we saw Harry like dealing with like flashbacks from the Dursleys and whatnot. Mm -hmm, um, because yeah. that was something I always had a problem with in the books. Like he, Harry, in the books, always was miserable when he was home with the Dursleys, but it never impacted him when he was um, at Hogwarts. He was always just like surprised when someone was nice to him. So it was like really, really wonderful to see him like dealing with like his PTSD and like um, mm -hmm. making you know progress towards moving on. So I always yeah. I really liked that too. Mm -hmm. I also uh -huh. thought it was really funny how like Hermione was like the most wanted person. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I loved that. I thought it was so ridiculous and so mm -hmm. funny. Okay, can we talk about how Harry treats his son now? Yes. Yes. <laughs> so, most importantly to me is the scene when Harry gives Albus the blanket. And <laughs> Albus gets mad. What the hell is this for, Dad? Thanks for the fucking yeah. last blanket. Yeah, so, and he's ungrateful, and then at some point, you know, the, it escalates. He says that he wishes Harry wasn't his dad, and then Harry says, I wish you weren't my son sometimes, too, or whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah I cried. <laughs> I'm, like, actually, this probably, like, oh, I'm so mad at this scene. Like, that's not how, okay, so the thing about having, like, being a parent versus being a child is that as a child, Okay, as a parent, you are the one who unconditionally loves your child. Your child, right. like, probably will unconditionally love you, but that is learned and not, like, mm -hmm. and and also like, yeah, given. Oh, I'm so mad. Like, of course the 14-year-old is going to be mad that he got a fucking baby blanket for his birthday. <laughs> right. Are you kidding me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like and that was, that was just stupid on Harry's part. Yeah, yeah. and he, like Harry was stupid have, the whole time. Oh like, my god! Know. Yeah, they already like, have a this blanket like, and something else. Yeah, like, give him like a flat screen TV and a blanket, and it'll make him yeah. feel so much better. <laughs> yeah, like, they, they already take have the blanket relationship, and then you like he says. I remember him saying what everyone else got, and I, all I remember is that like the six year old, the little one got, or no, I don't like, know how old she is, but Lily got like fairy wings, which is what she asked for, mm -hmm. and then like the uh, James got something that was like obvious for his age. I don't know. It's just like it, they fit very well, and then he got a fucking baby blanket. Of yeah, he's mad. Yeah. Why wouldn't he be mad? And then, like, you're just being like, well, you should be grateful that I got you a baby blanket. And so, of course, he's going to be mad. Like, duh. That's what happens when you have a 14-year-old. Like, 14-year-olds are assholes. I think also, though, like, Harry never had, like, okay, the Dursleys were horrible. He had Hagrid and, like, Dumbledore as, like, parent figures, but never, like, a dad that, like. Yes. I don't know. I mean, I guess he also had the Weasleys, technically, mm -hmm. but, like, it just, I don't, I guess he just doesn't know how to do it, mm -hmm. ever. Well, I don't like when people are, like, he had Lupin, he had Sirius, he had Mr. Weasley. He yeah, that's different. He had them all his life. They're right, not, yeah. like, while Mr. Weasley was probably the close, like, everyone's, like, Sirius and Lupin, nobody ever mentions Mr. Weasley in that, and Mr. Oh. Weasley is the closest Harry ever yeah, got to his father. And but that's friend. not who he grew up with, you yeah. know? Like, right. he didn't meet these people until he was 11. Mm -hmm. When that's like you know that's a you know one that, to ten that's, that's a like big bonding birth period. to eleven is like where you're shaped as a person. Yes. Mm -hmm. So if you had shitty fucking parenting, you're gonna be a shitty parent. Mm -hmm. Like let's yeah. <laughs> well, also Whether you're like, the chosen one or not. <laughs> right. But also he's married to Ginny. Like where is she in this like deciding factor? Like didn't she say like oh that's really a good idea? Like yes, give him the baby blanket, but also maybe we should get him something else. Yeah. Too. Yeah, true, yeah. <laughs> like where is she? Like did he not talk to them? Not talk to his wife about what he's getting his kids for? I don't even remember what it was. Was it Christmas? Because all three of them got gifts. Yeah, I think so. Christmas. probably Christmas. Yeah, because it yeah. was—I think it was during the school. You know, I don't remember it being like um, Albus's birthday. Maybe yeah. he got him a blanket because he got the invisibility blanket. Oh, oh wait, that's what God. James got. James got the invisibility. Oh yeah, oh, yeah are you fucking that's kidding that's me? That's you that's gave my thought. older brother. You gave my <laughs> older brother the invisibility cloak, and you gave me a baby blanket. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. What what child wouldn't be upset? Like, I mean, we're talking about children who have had good parents 
Mm -hmm. throughout their lives they don't have any sort of like shitty growing up situation so yeah they're fucking privileged why wouldn't he be upset about that (laughs) it's like i'm Mm -hmm. like very upset by the whole fact that the reason harry gets so mad at his child to say that i sometimes wish you never existed or that i wasn't your dad or whatever is because he's ungrateful about getting a baby blanket yeah like it's just it he was, was not fucking real. Gave it to him when he was a fucking baby. Yeah, I know. Right? Yeah. Oh, he's so mad. <laughs> so mad about it. Mm-hmm. I think I'm personally on the side where like I don't agree with that situation, but I feel like for the most part, Harry like did his best as a dad. Like yeah. I, other than that one scene, I think that like Harry or like people who are like Harry's a terrible father. Like he doesn't know how to parent his kids. Oh no. So bad. I, and I'm like. Yeah. He did the best he could. He kept trying. Like, you know, he wasn't right. always right. He was making mistakes. But, you know, he never stopped trying. It wasn't like, right. I don't care anymore. Which like, is what I mean care. by he originally had bad parenting. So he doesn't know. Yeah. He doesn't have right. any, like, inspiration. Mm-hmm. Right. I Yeah, I 100% think that, like, Harry and Jenny and Hermione and Ron all, like, would make good parents and yes. like based on what we experience with them in the short periods of time that we see them as parents I think they did a fine job yeah uh, all parents make mistakes and that one I think is just like over the top and ridiculous and yeah. honestly like I feel like it's more of a detriment to the writing not so much a detriment to this character like I think yeah. the characterization seems unrealistic not as mm-hmm. much as like this character shouldn't have had children because they have PTSD <laughs> which I saw on Twitter somewhere. Oh my god, I saw that too. <gasps> that mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's how I feel. <laughs> yep. Um, what else talk about? how did you guys feel about the ending? Because the ending made me very emotional. Me too. Like when, like watching, um, having Harry watch his parents die. That was like a that was another thing for me that I was like. I didn't know I wanted this, but, like, this book wouldn't be complete without it. Like, that was a, a really, really emotional scene for me. Mm-hmm. And then and then, Sirius comes in, and then Hagrid comes in. Oh, wait, no, Sirius wasn't in the book, was he? Or was he? I don't remember. No, I think he is in there. It, they, it was, like, Sirius and then with Hagrid. Him. Yeah, you see them meet because that's mm-hmm. how Hagrid got the bike. Yeah, They're okay. There. Yeah, okay. so, like, that whole scene just, like – Everything just like yeah, you know, I mean, like that was a really, really that that was a really good choice on um, the writer's part, in my opinion. Mm-hmm, I agree. I think that's why I gave it four out of five stars. I remember yeah, being so did. irritated with this book, and then I read that scene. And I was like, oh well, it gets a higher rating than I was going <laughs> to, <laughs> <laughs> because it made me sob like a baby watching. That. When I was reading that part, though, my mind was like going so crazy, and I was having flashbacks to. Uh, Prisoner of Azkaban where Harry thinks his dad is saving him and it turns out to be him and I thought that was going to happen again and I was like oh my god mind blown and then I was wrong (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Mm -hmm. it was a really like I don't know I think I definitely thought about that scene in Prisoner of Azkaban too while I was reading that but it was more of a like wow this is really sad because like Harry has at some point in his life thought that his dad saved him and then he finds out that no, it was just himself. And this time he doesn't get to save his dad. He just right. has to watch it happen. Right. Ooh, chills. And it's like yeah. this isn't even the first time that this has happened to Harry. Like, he, you know, he's had flashbacks to this all his life and then like now it's like there and out in the open. Like it's it's real now. Yeah. He and physically just, could go in there. I'm getting emotional just thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It hurts me. It hurts me, but, like, in the best way. Yeah, like, it was a good... It was a very good ending. I loved it. Um, can we talk about the um, each of the characters? Because I've heard so many people talking about how they feel like the original cast, like, does not feel the same. I so, like, agree. What do you guys think? I agree. It's kind of like um, if anyone has read uh, The Air... Like after the mm. selection, oh, I read the first. How one. like those main characters feel nothing like the yeah. You read the like last three books from it. It like reminded me of that. Mm-hmm. Okay. I haven't read it yet. Oh, I didn't um, finish it because of that. <laughs> oh, great! Now I'm probably they were I'll never pick it up. You know, for the most part, I felt like there there were times where I'm like, I can see people saying this, like 
uh, like Harry walks in with a scar and or something, or he's bleeding, and Hermione's like, "It'll match the scar," or something like that. Like there, there were some really line uh, good lines that felt authentic. But then, like one time, like Ginny um, says this line to Malfoy, like uh, Draco is like screaming about something, whatever it is, and Ginny's like, "Draco, would you please stop?" And I'm like. <laughs> Who are you? Jenny would, like, kick him in his face. Like, what are you talking about? (laughs) Like, I just got so outraged at that one line. I'm like, Jenny, like, she's a firecracker. She would never, like, just, like, calmly tell Draco to stop. I know. She would defend Harry. Like, she'd be like, hey, calm the fuck down. You're talking to my husband right now. Like, you better shut up. Mm -hmm. Or you'll deal with me. (laughs) <laughs> that feels very more Jenny. Like, yeah. <laughs> you better sit down or else you have me to deal with. Um, yeah. I, then, yeah. Go ahead. Ron also felt um, his lines. I know. Not good at all. <laughs> <laughs> it was like they were trying really hard to reach the, like, the the derpy part of Ron, which exists. Yeah. Like, he's for sure a little bit derpy. But, like, they just, like, went off the deep end to the They just totally failed. He was, like, the goofy dad. And, like, I don't think he'd be – he's, like, the goofy dad, but, like, not that goofy, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I expected him to, like, say some punny things and, like, mm-hmm. like I could easily see him being a punny dad. I think well, my favorite just, line well, – Go ahead. You know what were you going to say? <laughs> I was just going to say it annoys me that, like, Hermione is the minister of magic and Ron fucking <laughs> – joke shop like I mean I guess that's like typical but still like why (laughs) I actually liked that I my big job problem was knowing that uh Ginny was like a journalist in a like she says something uh, I think Draco says something about like her newspaper is about to go out of business Mm -hmm. and she's like hey like and she tries to defend it but like Mm -hmm. I don't know. I picture Ginny doing something a lot Wasn't more like she playing for the Hollyhead Harpies or something. Yeah, I thought I that was that. a thing. And then now she's like just a jerk. She's a sports journalist. That's what she is. She should sure. still be playing Quidditch. Until <laughs> yeah. she's in her fifties, she would still be playing Quidditch. Um, my favorite. I remember my favorite line from Ron was when they were, um, they were all together back at like um, Godric's Hollow, and um, Hermione and Scorpius say something at the same time. And he's like, "Blind me, there's two of them." That was my favorite Ron line. But for the most <laughs> yeah. part, he was very, very dirty and like unlike his character. Yeah, that was also my favorite line of Ron. I, it felt very <laughs> authentic. Oh, I wish I still had all of my notes because I would have <laughs> been able to like scroll through like all my favorite quotes. <laughs> I should have watched my review before this to like refresh. No, I it. did. I I watched oh. mine. I remember, but you didn't. Um, <laughs> I mean, I have my hashtag on Twitter that I can go through when I live tweet it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a lot of them. Does anyone have questions? Anyone that's watching? Yeah, if you guys have questions, ask us in the live chat. You can us. on what do you want to know? What do you want us to talk about? Because I'm I'm like raking my brain. Yeah, Same. I think um, we could uh, start wrapping it up like in like ten minutes. Yeah. yeah. So like, send in your last minute questions. Um, oh yeah, and I I loved McGonagall. She was another mm-hmm. one that I loved. She out of everyone, she was like the most authentic to me. Mm-hmm. Like me when too. when Albus and Scorpius are like under the invisibility cloak in the library and they're not supposed to be together, and she's like, well, if I didn't see you, I didn't see you. And yeah. I'm like, that's my girl. <laughs> Yeah, and I also <laughs> didn't like that Harry was rude to her. I was like, how dare you? Oh, no. How dare you? Heart. <laughs> and I just, I liked that, I I liked how she stood up for herself and then was just, like, so baffled by how he was talking to her that she just was mm-hmm. like, "What? Well, okay, I guess I'll shut up because yeah. how how dare you? Are you speaking to me like this? But, and then, and then she just, like, quietly fights back. But I'm yeah. not talking about it. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you think the ma- the magic will come across the, the stages of play? I don't know. I really I don't know how they do no it. Idea. But I feel it's so good. I'm I just so I need to see it. I can't even like imagine it at all. I've seen a couple like um like snips on like snips. Oh, snips. I have. What is that? Snippet. Snippet. 
that um on twitter and like it looks so cool they like do these like dramatic like walk-ins with their like cloaks and like everything looks really cool and i wish i could see it so i could see how mm -hmm. the magic well it is coming to the u.s i know for a fact <laughs> it's coming to new york but i'm sure it'll move across america <sighs> must be nice i mean i know right I'm so if i get tickets <laughs> I know, let's be like, real. I'm gonna, like, I mean, there are people, I think it, what is it? Is it somebody, I think it's NIE's has tickets in like yeah. 2017. And I'm like, that's going to be me. Like 2019, I'll finally be able to see it. Yep. After all these years. <laughs> I know, she was just talking about it on Twitter today. I was laughing. <laughs> uh, that's so weird. Yeah, I, I'm really intrigued by the fact that like this is a stage play, which means they can't just CGI anything to right. make it real. Like it's mm -hmm. all got to be made which uh i don't know like i i'm a huge musical fan so like mm -hmm. wicked has magic too um but not like to the extent of how this is described like there's only a few things that happen in wicked which are really well done and amazing so i just have hope that you know you wouldn't make it happen if you couldn't make it happen so i think it'll be really cool if i ever get to see it live mm -hmm. Whoa, this says, um, I heard the Warners Brothers is open to a cursed child movie adaption. Do you think they should do that? <laughs> that would, <laughs> would you watch it? I think that's, I don't want Warner Brothers to do it. Yeah. I don't want anyone to do it. <laughs> Wait, did Warner Brothers do the other movies? Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Warner Brothers yeah. has the rights to all of it, I think. Oh, mm -hmm. that's weird. Is, Warner Brothers is doing Fantastic yeah. Beasts. I think that, um, if they were going to do anything, I think they should just film the stage production and right. like sell it online no. or like play it in theaters or something and yeah i mean if they you know then they could add more cgi and stuff but um i think if they were going to adapt it to a movie they would just change it everything and then it's like why did you even make the cursed child the play in the yeah, first well, place even the point. yeah because the movie the movie would be so much more su successful than the play because right you could see that anywhere, and the play yeah. is currently restricted to that one theater in London. I mean, we have seen some great theater to movie adaptations in life. Um, Rent is one. I was gonna and, say Rent. Yeah, Rent is a is a great movie adaptation of a theater play, and so is Chicago. Mm -hmm. um, but those are musicals. Musicals. So, yeah, I feel like with this one, it would be really, really different. Yeah, I feel like, well, you'd still have to cut stuff, which is fun amazing to me because there's literally nothing in this play. <laughs> yeah. It's a five-hour play. You'd have to cut it down at least half that time. They and, can't. They yeah, exactly. can't. <laughs> it's down. already so compact because a play is different than a book. They can just take out all the parts we don't like. <laughs> <laughs> so just leave, like, the, the six just leave the just leave the ending. That's weird. it. <laughs> like, just show us the flashback portions of, like, when they're in time and Harry yes. is watching his parents die, and that's all we need. We just need the one scene. Just make it a short film. <laughs> I agree. Right. Do you think Draco changed the most? I do. You're so upset. I don't know. He's still pretty annoying. Um, yeah, I agree. <laughs> like, my problematic babe. He He, for sure, like, there's still a part, I don't remember where it is, where he just still feels so selfish to me. Mm -hmm. It's after the duel at some point. I think he's talking about how, you know, like, Scorpius has been through so much because of the rumor of him being an the like Voldemort's son. Yeah, that was a little bit um, later in the book. I know the scene you're talking about. Yeah, and then he, like, also brings up the fact that his wife is sick. And it's just very, like, poor me, I'm important. And I'm just like, have you learned yet that you're not important? <laughs> oh, he's important to me. <laughs> I mean, like, I love Draco. I do. Like, I get it. Mm -hmm. I do. And I'm glad that he was in the book, the, the play and stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't. I think it would have been very sad to not see him in this play. I think he mm -hmm. was important for it. But I just, he needs to stop pretending that he's the star of the show because he's not. Oh, oh yeah, he's not. <laughs> I was gonna say, I I just like I think he had a really good redemption arc, which is something that doesn't happen a lot. There's a lot of redemption arcs out there that are just like, we didn't even want this. Yeah. This didn't go properly. I feel like you know, um, he's definitely still arrogant, self-centered, concerned with himself and his family only. 
but I feel like he has grown a bit, and I just feel like the way that it was expressed made his development feel really real. Mm-hmm. I agree. Yeah. I think <laughs> I think that my opinion changed the most on a character, which would be Snape. Mm-hmm. I think everyone he else, changed. I still like, pretty much feel exactly the same way. I still hate Snape. I, I know, I do I too. Also I also like, like him more. Snape. There's just still, like, there's now a, a piece of me that can actually comprehend why people do like Snape, even though... Right, I'm, me too. Like I agree. I think I've always had this little bit of respect for him that doesn't translate to admiration. <laughs> and I feel like it's just, like, added to that tiny little... Like, the one fact that he was touched by the fact <laughs> that Harry named his child him, that was the only, like, thing I got out of it. Yeah, personally. I know. Because the rest I just of don't get like, how people can be obsessed with him when the entire fucking series he was torturing Harry, and then like the last book he's like, wait, was it the last book? What book was that? I don't know. He had like yeah. a couple chapters of redemption, and everyone's like, oh my god, I love him, and I'm like, yeah. why? <laughs> yeah, and I really hate the argument that it's like, well, he had a problem with Harry because he was in love with Lily and he hated Harry's dad and all this stuff. And I was like, okay, first of all, why is he taking he out on the child? Him. But mm-hmm. second of all, he also tortured Neville Longbottom. So I don't agree with you. Like yeah, that but- doesn't get to be the reason that he tortured his students, specifically right. those two students, because mm-hmm. like he had to pretend to be evil because he was a double spy or whatever, but he didn't need to be specifically torturous to those two people. I agree. (sighs) And I mean, it's not like, I don't know, I always saw it as like, or maybe it was just the way it was conveyed in the movie. He just always like, it never seemed like he really wanted to be on the good side. He just wanted to like, do it for Lily. Like, especially in the movie, he was like, I don't want to do this. And I'm like, you sure he's good? You sure? (laughs) You sure? Yeah. Like his his reasonings behind being against Voldemort are literally only well Voldemort killed the love of my life. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't like him anymore. Not because Voldemort's a fucking psycho and mm-hmm. might destroy our wizarding race <sighs> or anything. Like just, just because frustrated Lily. <sighs> I want to ask this before we wrap up. How did you feel on the little bit of Germione we got? Oh, my God. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All of the feels that were positive favorite. about that. that was a favorite. <laughs> I literally, there are a lot of times where I say I throw my book and I don't, and I just feel like I want to. Like, I threw my book down. I was like, no. <laughs> oh, I loved it. I lived for it. It was amazing. I was just like, yes, I'm so obsessed with this. I didn't know I wanted it, and I, I did, and I love it. it. You know, that's the stuff we wanted to see in this. Yeah. That's what I wanted. That was definitely something I didn't know that I needed. And now that it's happened, I'm just like, okay, for sure needed that. I'm glad I got it. Thank you. Thank you. I agree. <laughs> and and I also, good. even though like it's ridiculous, I also liked the whole Padma and Ron thing. I liked that. It was weird, but I liked it. <laughs> I, I was a fan. I, about it. <laughs> like, I was glad. I was glad that it didn't like stay that way or anything. Mm-hmm. But yeah. like J.K. Rowling has talked multiple times about how, like in reality, if this series was to go on, Hermione and Ron might not make it. Which I feel sense. like. I know, but I feel like I feel like it's it, realistic, though. Yeah, it it one hundred percent is. They fight way too often, like already. Yeah. What they have though? the rockiest relationship I've ever read. Yeah. I feel like in the like, books it wasn't it? that rocky, though. I feel like when they were, like, married, like, the, the moments we did get of Ron and Hermione weren't that rocky, like... In this book? When, yeah, like, yeah, not like the... Well, yeah. Not like the... There's nothing in this scene. book. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> but, like, the scene when, um... What is Ron trying to do? He wants to, like, renew their vows, and Hermione thinks it's something different, and she's ready to, like, stab him with her, her wand. And she's like, no, <laughs> like, that's not what I'm trying to do. <laughs> Yeah, I think he's trying to take – she thinks he's trying to take a break. Yeah, and, and – To open their own. Own. Like, I thought that was cute. Yeah, I know. <laughs> the, the version of Her- Hermione and Ron in this book are a lot more, like, grounded. Yeah. Whereas in the original series, like, they're a lot more rocky all the time. time. Yeah. <laughs> and I feel like out of everyone that we have met in the series, if Ron was going to divorce Hermione and someday remarry, it 
could easily be Padma. Like, that makes sense to me. She's not scary and terrifying, so he would actually be willing to go up and ask her on a date, like, number one. And two, she would be forceful enough to be like, hey, I'm not married yet. You asked me on a date, so now we're getting married. The only thing that makes me feel weird about it was that, like, they had such a, ter- like, they both had such a terrible time at the ball. Like, I feel like But Padma that didn't was happen so- in this version. That's why it worked. That's why he's very oh, right. Oh, I didn't even think of that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I get in, it now. In that alternate reality, there's never, uh, Hermione, she, Hermione never dates Crumb because she thinks that the, the, um, Russian people... Where, what are they from? Whatever. All of those people, Bulgarians, are all, like, in on something bad. They're trying to, like, hurt Harry. So she never dates Victor Crumb. So Ron and Hermione go to the dance as friends, but there's never any jealousy because she's never dating Crumb. So Rum, Ron, Rum? Rum? <laughs> Ron never, like, gets mad at her and all that stuff. That never happens. So Hermione and Ron dance politely, Hermione goes to bed early, and Padma comes up and asks Ron to go I off and dance. About that. A great night. Yeah, I didn't remember that either. Oh. That part, like, stuck in my head because that okay, was very that. realistic. I, like, that was one of the only moments of that alternate, of any of the alternate realities that seemed very, like, grounded in our reality of what Harry Potter is, and it could have mm-hmm. easily mm-hmm. happened that way. That totally makes sense now. Thanks for clarifying that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, would you tell a non-Harry Potter fan to read this book? I don't think I would. No, no. me neither. Absolutely not. Don't taint your your feelings on Harry Potter like even further if you don't like. Right. It. Yeah. Well, not, yeah. If you've never and read, they wouldn't it, then... get it anyways. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I mean, like, like maybe maybe she's saying like a, a someone who like didn't really like Harry Potter or like only watched the movies like just isn't a big fan but I'm like if you didn't like it like maybe if, like it was like amazing I'd be like yes like this will make you love it but like I don't think that this could make anyone like Harry Potter more than anyone already mm-hmm. did yeah I agree I would say that if you were a huge fan of the movies then you could easily you read could, it without you reading could read more. this and maybe enjoy it because yeah. Like, if you're a fan of movie production, well, this is a stage production, so, right. like, even though you're not physically getting the visuals, you can you can try to mm-hmm. understand right. what the visuals are. Which is another are reason I enjoyed it, because, you know, film student. Yeah. Yeah. Where do you guys think that it would rate on your scale of how you like Harry Potter books? Like, is there are there any of the series that you liked less, or is it at the bottom for you? It's not even on the list. Like, <laughs> to me, it's really separate. Like, I, I like it is the eighth Harry Potter book. I know, but it's not. I don't like it's really like irritating. That, I don't think you would like that either. I honestly think of it as like hardcore fan fiction. Me too. Mm-hmm. Even though it's not, but it is. It is. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I don't see it as real. Technically, J.K. Rowling didn't write it, so if uh, Jack Thorne is a fan of Harry Potter. Ah! It's fiction. Right. It's technically fan fiction. They're just saying it's canon. But, yeah. you know. How, but she how technically it. approved the script. So, like, she approved I don't, I don't buy into that future. that much. I know. I don't. Like, like there's no way. Gonna approve it either way. Like, they could have written anything and it would be like, yeah, I love it. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. yeah like, like, everyone's like, but she approved it. I'm like, that means nothing to me. I feel like what likely happened is they asked permission to write a screenplay or, I mean, a script for a play production of, like, the eighth Harry Potter book. And she mm-hmm. approved the fact that they were yeah. writing it and then had no say in what was happening. Yeah, like, I don't think she got a bare. Or yeah. Like, I mean, maybe she got a bareback version of, like, well, we're going to follow Albus and he's going to be friends mm-hmm. with Scorpius. And they're going to go through some shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's all you get. And then she just said yes. So No, yeah. I totally agree. I don't think the approval is like she read it and loved it so much that she would let it out to her fans. Like, I, I think if she signed off on it, like, she was going to have to, like, see it through, you know? Yeah. yeah, I feel like it's very the same way that Cassandra Clare, like, technically has had a say in the – shadow hunters series well that's yeah. fucking bullshit so <laughs> <laughs> um what was the other thing i was going to say the last thing i wanted I to know. say hey you were 
you asked, oh, if you consider this like part of the series? Yeah, like, um, no, my question was like, how does it rate on your scale? Oh. Like, like, if it was like, um, like best to worst Harry Potter books, like where does Cursed Child lay on that? Like, d- is there a Harry Potter book you like less than it that you enjoyed Cursed Child more? I don't think so for me. Mine, like, that, it's at the bottom for me. Yeah, yeah, I think it, so. mine too. Mm-hmm. If, when I when I separate it as like not being part of the series, I can say that I like it more than I think I could if I put them actually as right. Me series. too. Mm-hmm. Because it's just like nowhere near the same level as like no. even taking taking away the fact that like these seven books are books, novels where you get all of the exposition and description and stuff, and then this book is like a stage play, so it's obviously very different in description and detail it still is like it's the not content. at the same level of like right like how intricately designed this world and this plot was like things that happen in the first book are still important in the seventh book like this was not that to me right no, I really right. enjoyed it I just enjoyed it as a fan fiction or like as if I had read something online like I really enjoyed it but I didn't think of it as like she wrote it as the eighth book because that's mm-hmm. not what it was. Yeah. Oh, that's what I was going to say. I feel like it's on the same spectrum if uh, the, of the Harry Potter musicals. Not saying that it's, like, just as good as those, but, like, that – if I was going to put it on a list of, like, best to worst, I would put it on that list, not on this mm-hmm. list. Mm-hmm. Have, you, have you guys watched them yet or no? No. no. <sighs> oh, there's a lot of similarities, just so you know. Like, a lot. Like, AVPS is, like, if – if Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, like, smoked heroin, and, like, <laughs> it's, like that's what it is, because there, there's so many similarities, it's, like, they had to have watched it and been, like, oh, we'll take this, and we'll take this, because <laughs> it's, like, it's uncanny how many similarities there are, mm-hmm. like, not even similarities, like, this is, like, somebody else wrote this before you, a couple <laughs> years ago. Oh, no. But you should still watch them there, so. Mm-hmm. So, before we go, we want to announce the... October through December. Yes. Um, All right. And none of us have it yet. I do. um, Yeah, you should go grab it because you have a. Oh, I'll go get it. Hold on. Okay. But while Emma grabs it, we are just going to pretend that we're talking about something important because (laughs) (laughs) we don't want to have you just staring at our faces. Okay. So no one has this book yet because it's not out until November. So even though this is the book for October through December, there are very few people who could read it right now. Fair. It's like the last week of October anyways. Oh, that's true. That's true. (laughs) Oh my God. It's so close to being (laughs) over. But yeah, so we'll be doing a live show for this video, for this book right around the time, like right after the Bibliothon. So, Mm -hmm. and it is, dun, 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 Heartless by Marissa Meyer. I'm excited. I'm excited to have my hardcover. It's 100% separate from the Lunar Chronicles, right? Yes, because it's yeah. about the, the Queen of Hearts, so it's like okay. a totally different world. Okay, so I'm it's so about the Queen of Hearts. I'm so excited. Right, not the Red Queen. It's, yeah, it's about the Queen of Hearts. I'm so yeah. excited. Mm-hmm. Oh, I it's know. a hefty book. It's like 450 pages. <laughs> I'm so excited. I can't wait to read it. Sierra is a huge Alice in Wonderland fan. Um, (laughs) Speaking of the Bibliothon, we'll be announcing things this week for those of you who are participating, just so you know. Everything will be coming to you by the end of next week. Yeah, Yeah, like like literally a week week You guys will have all the info. Mm -hmm. Really, really exciting. All right. And with that, we're going to say goodbye. Thank you for watching. Thank Thank you for watching. Thanks.